In our exams, we know that we could get asked questions where we've got to do some calculations on decision trees. Maybe that's working out the expected monetary value of a decision. Maybe it's working out the net gains of a decision. We've also got to bear in mind, we could get asked to do longer written answers on decision trees as well. Asking us to either analyze, maybe evaluate the usefulness of decision trees as a decision-making tool. In order to do that, we're going to need to know some of the pros and cons of decision trees and have those up our sleeves on examination day. So in this tutorial, we're just going to give you a very, very brief rundown of a couple of the pros and a couple of the cons of decision trees and how we might go about analyzing its usefulness. So we'll start with the pros, first of all. One of the big pros of decision trees is that it forces managers into analyzing the different possible options that they could make, the different kind of decisions that they could make. But perhaps most importantly, it illustrates to managers the opportunity cost of a decision. For example, imagine we've got a firm, let's imagine it's Cadbury's, and they are analyzing whether they should launch uh, a new chocolate bar or whether they should launch a, a new sweet product. Now, if they do their decision trees, they might work out that the net gain of the new chocolate bar might be 10 million pounds. They might work out that the net gain of the, the bag of sweets might be 8 million pounds. Automatically, they can see the opportunity cost of their decisions. So the decision tree would tell them to go with the chocolate bar. It's got the higher net gain of 10 million pounds. But the opportunity cost of making that decision, the value of the alternative foregone, in this case the bag of sweets, is eight million pounds. So good pro for decision trees there. It places some numeric data attached to what you're giving up when you make a decision. Opportunity cost, key term for the examinations. Number two, at the very least, Decision trees are forcing managers to inject some quantitative analysis into the decision-making process. So rather than just rely on qualitative information, on thoughts, values, opinions, it allows managers to inject some data to support the decision-making process. Always a benefit because it's slightly more scientific than just relying on qualitative information. What we could also say as our pro for decision trees is that they are at their most useful when they are particularly of use to managers is when we're constructing decision trees based on scenarios or situations that the business may have encountered in the past. So for example, if Apple were to be using a decision tree when launching the iPhone 8, they have already got a history of iPhone 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So they will be able to make better estimations, better forecasts, uh, better guesses at what the different values might be that they might put in their decision trees. And it makes the whole process more useful and a more tangible tool for them to use. If we balance that out with the kind of difficulties that firms might experience through the use of decision trees, top of that list has got to be how accurate are the estimates going to be? In particular, how accurate are those probabilities going to be of different outcomes occurring? Even if the business is fortunate and it's making decisions that are similar to scenarios they may have faced in the past, we know that businesses are affected by the external environment and over time scenarios can change. So when we did our decision tree a year ago and we embarked on a project on the back of our decision tree, the external environment may have progressed from that time. When we did the decision tree, there might have been a 0.7 probability of success, but events in the external environment could distort those probabilities. So even if they were accurate at the time of the construction of the decision tree, situations can change. So it's something to bear in mind. Number two is an absolute beauty. Criticism of decision trees is that they can be prone to managerial bias. So who's coming up with these estimates and these values that we're placing in decision trees? Could well be it's different managers who are pitching each of the different alternative decisions to senior people in the organization. Now, if I'm pitching an idea, it's in my interests for that idea to be accepted. If that idea is accepted and it goes well, I'm going to be remembered as the person who brought that idea to the organization, bought those potential profits to the organization. So it's in my interest to 
perhaps manipulate the data that's used in the decision tree, manipulate forecasts of success and financial outcomes so that my decision that I've brought to the table gets chosen. So it can be prone to managerial biases. Um, we said that one of the pros of decision trees is that they're at my most useful if the business has been in similar situations in the past or is making decisions that they've made similar decisions on in, in history. Well, they're less useful then by default when businesses are making decisions based on new scenarios that they find themselves in. So it really degrades the value of decision trees as a tool when you're using it to make decisions when you're in new situations or perhaps new markets that you're not familiar with. And the final thing that we might just put in just for a little bit of balance there is that with decision trees, they're a great quantitative decision-making tool. But if they're used and qualitative bits of information are sidelined as a result, qualitative bits of information such as maybe how workers might respond to the different decisions that we're making, how trade unions might respond to different decisions that we're making, these kind of qualitative factors are important as well. So if decision trees lead to the sidelining of qualitative factors, again, it means the business can run into difficulties. So we've got some pros of this decision-making tool. We've got some cons as well. One thing that perhaps we could turn to when we're evaluating if we're called upon in the exam. First of all, we could say decision trees are only as useful as the quality of the data that goes into their construction. If the estimates and the forecasts that are used to help generate the data to go into decision trees is sound, it makes our decision trees more useful. So it makes them a more purposeful managerial tool. So we can certainly get that into a conclusion. But the other thing perhaps we want to end on in the conclusion is that with any quantitative decision-making technique, break-even, investment, appraisal, critical path analysis, any of these kind of guys, Businesses should be reluctant using any of those techniques in isolation. Whenever we're making decisions, particularly long-term strategic decisions, managers should be drawing on a range of quantitative and qualitative sources of information in order to inform their decisions. It's the kind of thing we might squeeze into an evaluation now. Don't use decision trees in isolation. Use them as part of a suite of sources of information so you're drawing on different quantitative and qualitative techniques so decisions are based on a range of sources of data rather than just one. Uh, so that gives us the pros, it gives us the cons, maybe something that we think about for our evaluation as well and also just allows us to make sure that we can answer longer questions on decision trees as well as just those shorter numeric calculation tasks.